When I was a kid, one of my favorite Christmas pastimes was circling the pages of the latest Toy Store wish book. And on this episode of Geek Dad Life, we're going to go back in time to 1985 to pick our favorites from the Christmas dream book from Toys R Us. Hey everybody and welcome to Geek Dad Life. It's your host, Jay Gladfelter here. So I thought it would be fun this holiday season to relive one of my favorite uh, childhood pastimes, which is, you know, picking out things that I wanted Santa to get me uh, to put under the tree. And, you know, I have been collecting vintage uh, toy catalogs for, for years and uh, it's time to put these things to you. So if you really like this video and want me to do more like it, hit that like button and uh, let's have some fun. Uh, so this catalog is from 1985. Uh, it's one of the oldest ones I've ever seen, uh, but still this is a really cool uh, you know, piece of history, piece of toy collecting, toy buying, uh, toy store history. Uh, this is this is really going to the peak of Toys R Us. Mid '80s to mid '90s was their, I would argue, their their biggest heyday, and uh, really is kind of the biggest heyday of of toy buying. So really excited to go through these pages and pick out my favorites and uh, you know let me know down in the comments below uh, what would you pick uh, on these pages um, do you agree with my picks or would you have done something different uh, let's have a conversation uh, down in the comment section below all right so let's dig into it let's check out page one of the 1985 christmas dream book from toys r us on the first page we have coleco toys with cabbage patch kids and sectars cabbage patch kids weren't being one of the biggest toys of the 80s and Sectar is kind of being a, a underrated, under the radar toy line that had, you know, amazing figures, vehicles, and one of the biggest, most amazing play sets of the 80s, the Sectars, the Hive action play set. This thing was like over four feet tall. It was gigantic, had everything you'd want out of a play set and even had an awesome, you know, monster puppet that would, you know, capture people. Uh, it was just, it was a really neat play set that you just don't see that often, and very rarely do you find it complete. In 1985, it was $44.97, well over $100 when we're adjusting for inflation, and it's gonna be my pick from the first page of the Christmas Dream Book. On page two, we have some more heavy hitters with LJN's Wrestling Superstars, an amazing toy line with these thick rubber wrestlers that were indestructible and could be classified as weapons as a kid if you chucked it at somebody. And we also have the Slingham Flingham wrestling ring, which was awesome. I have always been more partial to the Hasbro wrestling figs because that's when I was really into the WWF, but these are still classics. Uh, we still have some more Cabbage Patch Kids, smaller play sets. We also have some Voltron, but if I had to pick one thing off this page, it would be the Thundercats action figures. Absolutely love the Thundercats cartoon show as a kid, as well as the action figure line. Uh, it's a really hard one to collect today and find them complete and in nice shape. And at $4.97 retail back in the day, these were a great value buy. These were much bigger figures than really anything else in the market at the time and uh, really hold up still today. On the next page, we have our Hasbro representation here. And surprisingly, no Transformers and no G.I. Joes for the Hasbro section. Uh, no, they uh, found it more appropriate to uh, share the My Buddy doll, which that theme song is still stuck in my head to this day. Uh, we also have uh, the My Little Pony Dream Castle, which looks pretty cool. Uh, Shuffle Town, school play sets, railroad play sets, Light Bright, which was a classic for any uh, Christmas morning. And uh, But if I had to pick one thing here, it would be the musical glow worm. I had one as a kid. Uh, I think it was the musical glow worm. Uh, so if I had to pick one thing, it would be that at $14.97. Uh, but again, still a bummer that the Hasbro section had no G.I. Joe and no Transformers, which in 85 was going really, really strong. Going to the next page, we have Milton Bradley and Play School. So we have uh, some fantastic games like Simon, as well as Connect Four and Life. Uh, the Tyke Bike, I mean, a bunch of kids had those. Uh, but if I had to pick one thing, it would be the Bigfoot 4x4x4 super size truck. Now, while I did not have this toy, I had a later version that I think maybe Hot Wheels made. Bigfoot was a you know, a classic, a staple uh, for kids growing up in the 80s and 90s. It was the first monster truck 
and it really captured so many kids' imaginations. One of my big Christmas presents was getting the Power Wheels Bigfoot that I absolutely loved, and it's one that I'm still searching for to bring back into my collection today. The next two pages are all Mattel toys, so obviously you're gonna have some showcasing for Barbie. We also have some great Rainbow Bright dolls, uh, but if I have to pick anything from this page, it would be the See and Say, uh, the Farmer Says. I mean, so many different versions of these were great. Every kid had them. I mean, I got my kids the awesome Muppets uh, Count Numbers uh, C and Say set, and um, that's what I would pick from this page. Going on to the next page, we get into some Masters of the Universe and She-Ra Princes of Power coolness. Uh, we have the Snake Mountain playset as well as figures. So these figures were at $4.97 each, uh, which seems to be kind of the standard cost of an action figure in 1985. And that Snake Mountain is coming in at $39.84. But hey, we had that $4 mail-in rebate. Uh, the Princess of Power stuff is amazing. The Crystal Castle is, again, one of those great playsets of the 80s. Coming about 10 bucks cheaper than the Snake Mountain. Uh, maybe that microphone really added that much cost to it. Uh, Jason the Wheeled Warriors, uh, great sets. I've, I had a few as a kid. Uh, but if I had to pick one thing here, it would be Snake Mountain. I mean, it's just one of those tent pole play sets. And while I absolutely uh, would prefer Castle Grayskull compared to Snake Mountain, it's still a great set. And uh, also absolutely love Battle Armor He-Man. Both Battle Armor He-Man and Skeletor are some of my favorites from the Masters of the Universe toy line, as well as favorite toys of all time. Going on to the next page, we have some toys from Ertl. Nothing really stands out to me here personally, uh, but if I had to pick one thing, that Rainbow Bright AM FM microphone looks pretty cool. I, you know, maybe I would go Bigfoot again with the AM FM desk radio, uh, but I think I'm gonna go microphone here, change it up a little bit. And then on the next page, we have our Kenner offerings. Now it's surprising that, you know, this is kind of the end of Star Wars, so we have no Star Wars here. Uh, in late 1985, but we do have the Mask Rhino Rig. Mask is a fantastic toy line, one of the greats of the 80s. And while it's not top tier, it definitely uh, deserves its legendary status for its amazing vehicles and play sets. And the Mask Rhino is one of the best. So that's gonna be my pick from this page, even though we have some great runner-ups with like the Play-Doh Mop Top Hair Shop. They made so many different versions of this Play-Doh set. I had the Beetlejuice version as a kid and again, loved Care Bears uh, as a kid as well. And then BMX bikes, those were like the coolest bikes you could possibly get in the 80s. But still, the Mask Rhino Rig is gonna be my pick from this section. And then going on to the next page, we have some great stuff from Panache Place. And if you're gonna talk about Panache Place, you're gonna be talking about some Voltron. And uh, we have just about everything that they uh, offered for the Voltron line represented here with the action figures, the vehicles, the uh, Voltron actual defender of the universe, as well as the Voltron Castle of Lions, one of the greatest play sets of all time. And honestly, it's rare, it's hard to find them complete, but if you do, it just has so many play features, captures so many moments that were shown in the cartoon series, and it has never been really brought back or beat since this one that Panache Place made over 35 years ago. So it's gonna be my easy pick from this section. And on our last page full of branded toys, this is from Tonka. We have GoBots galore. So funny that Hasbro didn't rep Transformers here, but Tonka definitely rolled out a lot for their GoBots transforming robots as well as play sets. Now, while they are really good toys, I, as a kid, always thought they were kind of lesser than Transformers, so I was never a big fan of them. But I was a huge fan of Pound Puppies. And if I had to pick one thing here, this might be controversial, but I would pick uh, one of these pound puppies. And then on the last page, uh, we have some Toys R Us branded stuff. I love the I'm a Toys R Us kid sweatshirts. Uh, and you know, we have some wooden rocking chairs and cribs and stuff like that. That to me is was unappealing to me as a kid and is even more so now as, a, as an adult. But that jo uh, Jeffrey Giraffe doll, is awesome. I would absolutely love to add that uh, to my collection today and would have loved it as a kid, as a big Toys R Us kid myself. So uh, that is going to be my pick on the last page of the Christmas Dream Book 
from 1985 showing all of the great stuff that Santa could have gotten you from Toys R Us. So what did you think of my picks? Would you have picked differently? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you want me to do more videos like this one, hit that like button. And if you wanna see when those episodes drop, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon to be notified when the latest episode drops. Check out some of my other videos on this channel like this one that YouTube wants you to check out, as well as one of my latest videos. And until next time, hasta luego and goodbye.